we gave the first argument of the Vaishnavas from Mayavad Chattadushini that God is unlimited and we are very limited. Now we're going further forward to new arguments. The jivas, individual spirit souls, are declared to be non-different from the absolute supreme soul. That's what the impersonalist Mayavad is state. They say that we find air in a pot and we find air in the sky. So ultimately the air is the same. There is consciousness within us, within different vehicles or different bodies. And then there is the absolute consciousness. Ultimately consciousness is one. So this is their argument. However, the Vaishnavas respond saying, just by giving this example of the air in the pot and the air in the sky, doesn't establish that the individual souls and the multitude of souls we find in this world are the same with the absolute consciousness. This is not a very sound argument. We cannot compare the Pada Brahman with a material example like this air in the pot or in the sky. This is not a very strong uh, analogy. That supreme Brahman is not just like the material sky. So this analogy does not make any kind of concrete evidence. This is a very weak argument. The Vaishnavas give a better example saying that we can say it's true that we are all uh, made of consciousness. We are all Chaitana or Chaitanya consciousness. But that does not mean that there is no such thing as individual consciousness. We do not have the same consciousness as even another person in our immediate surroundings what to speak of God. So through bhakti we can develop affinity towards Krishna. In the Bhagavatam there's an example where when the gopis were searching for Krishna after he left the Ras, the gopis began imitating his pastimes because they were so deep in separation from him they began to imitate his pastimes. But they never became Krishna. Even in that time they were still gopis and after this viraha reduced they still remained gopis. There is no example anywhere where some devotee has become God. They may be so absorbed in Krishna that they express a sentiment that the Lord is all persuasive. Siya Ram, Maya Sab Jagajani, Koro Pranam, Koro Judapani. They see God everywhere, but that does not mean that they lose their individual being. There is an example given of uh, drops of water put into a glass of water. It does not merge because if you pour more water into the glass, the water will overfill if it's full. So we are part and parcel with God. Therefore, we have some connection with him, but we are not exactly the same. We have our own individual separate awareness and we should embrace that. At the same time, this is Advaya Gyan because we're connected to him. We're like his sons or children. Even when you add some water into the ocean, with the proper tools you can see, the volume increases, the, the water does not merge. Like the example we gave, if you have a glass of water, you can do it. Have a glass of water and have it close to the top and add more water into it, the water does not merge into the glass, it increases it. So in the same way, we should not say that at a pond state of liberation, we merge into God. The Mayavadis say, Oh, there's some green bird and it flies into the forest and then you just see the forest, it's merged into the forest. You may be sitting on a hilltop and you see a bird flying into a forest, but you sh a foolish person thinks the bird has merged into the trees. A t intelligent person understands the bird is there, it may have a, uh, a nest in the tree, uh, it may be foraging for food in the forest. The bird didn't just disappear. It's present. It was green. So you can't see it now from a far state place, but that's because of your faulty perception. There's a story that when Sankaracharya was a young boy, his mother sent him into the garden to pick eggplants. And he went out and came back sometime later with only one eggplant. She said, go collect many eggplants. I want to make some preparation. So he came back with one and his mother chastised him. I told you to bring many. I only found one, he said. What do you mean? You only found one. I only found one, he said. So she took him out to the garden. He said, what do you mean you only found one? Look, there's so many. 
The whole garden is filled with eggplants and many plants. He said, no, look, one, 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 one. He pointed at each eggplant of the hundreds of plants. One, 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 one. And his mother slapped him on the cheek. Foolish boy. What is this nonsense oneness you're talking about? So this is the Mayavadi philosophy. Just saying one, 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 everything is one does not establish that as fact. So the Vaishnava Acharya, especially Madhva, he taught that actually everything has some unique quality. Even the scientists teach that even every snowflake is unique if you're able to study it closely enough. So on one hand, the New Age spiritualists teach that we're all one. And at the same time, they say we're all unique. You can't have it both ways. Either we're all unique individuals with some unique individual nature or we're all one. How can you have both? The Vaishnavas teach that we are one in the sense that Mahaprabhu taught simultaneous oneness and difference, meaning that we are part of that supreme absolute truth, that one supreme whole. There is no separate existence from that absolute truth. Considering that I am separate from that, that is my ignorance. But we shouldn't limit the absolute truth thinking that we have no separate individuality within that. Even the different forms of God, the different Vishnu incarnations have their own awareness, their own consciousness. If we are all one, we lose our individual relationship and chance for that uh, sweet connection. Once our Gurudev and his Guru, Param Gurudev, were preaching and they met with a magistrate who was a very strong follower of Mayavad. And he saw Gurudev reading a book, which is Hari Bhakti Vilas. He said, why are you reading this book of Hari Bhakti Vilas? Why don't read the commentary of Sankaracharya? So they began a debate. And Param Gurudev came out from his room and said, your Mayavad philosophy is no better than stool. And the magistrate became very angry. No better than stool? How dare you offend my Sankaracharya? And Param Gurudev very boldly, Param Gurudev was very bold. He never uh, minced words. So when he said, oh, this Mayavad philosophy is no better than stool, the Mayavadi became very upset and said, how dare you say that? And then he explained. Yes, Param Gurudev said, if we are all one, what is the difference between stool or sugar or ananda? If we are ourself ananda, ourself, that transcendental bliss, how can we experience it? If you are sugar, you cannot taste your own sweetness. You need to have some separate, unique existence to be able to experience that sweetness. Therefore, in order for us to experience the goal, the spiritual life of ananda, bliss, we have to have some unique, separate existence or distinctness. At the same time, we are connected to that Supreme Absolute Whole. But what we're saying is don't limit its potentiality by saying that it all has to be one. We agree that we are part and parcel of that Supreme Whole. We are a part of the Whole. That means there is one Supreme Whole, that one Supreme Absolute Truth that we are part and parcel of all the living entities. Mai Vangso, Jiva Loke, Jiva Bhuta Sanatana. Krishna says in the Gita, Mai Vangso, we are the part and parcel of that Supreme Absolute Truth. But at the same time, we have our own unique individual experience. And we should embrace that. If we want sweetness, if we want bliss and happiness, we should embrace that, our own unique individuality, and not become trapped in this conception of impersonalism. Devotees never like to hear that we are one with God. Tulsidas spoke about this in the Ram Charit Manas. He spoke the mood of Hanuman, the great devotee of Lord Ram. Hanuman said, the position of being the devotee is eternal. And he spoke a verse. Sevya sevaka bhava vinuna bhava tariya iha urugara bhajiya ram apada pankaja sabakaja visar. O Lord, I am your eternal servant. You are my eternal master. This is our eternal relationship. This is in the mood of dasya ras, the mood of being the servant. But we follow that mood of the Brajabhasis where we do not even consider Krishna to be God in that transcendental realm of Braj, there is no Aishwarya or in reverence, no mood of worship. We're simply engaged in his sweet lila pastimes, just as his friend or his beloved 
or like his mother or father. It's a very sweet, natural relationship. So this is described in all the sastras. Jivera Surupoi, Krishna Nitya Das, Krishna Tatashta Shakti Bed Abed Prakash. Tatashta Shakti means the marginal potency of Krishna. Marginal meaning that we are on that shoreline between matter and spirit. We have the choice to go into the world of matter, Maya, or to go into the world of spirit, the spiritual world. And if we enter into Maya, then through the process of spiritual evolution, Bhakti Yoga, we can enter the spiritual world where we can be present in our spiritual Swarup, Dharma, in our spiritual form, with our spiritual variety of relationships and our residence and our name. All of these things have, like this world, we have a name. In that world, we have a name. This is this name and false identification is based on the body. In the spiritual world, we have a transcendental body, transcendental name, transcendental residence. All those things are there. So that's where we're entering. And as we heard before, if we negate that, saying that there is no higher dimension where these things are there, ultimately it's just a void, then people will seek out enjoyment and enjoying the variety of things that are possible in this world. So... The devotee's mood is that, oh, Sri Krishna, he is my eternal beloved. That relationship is eternal. Trying to give that up and achieve the goal of impersonalism is described to be like the deepest darkness of ignorance. It's a more deep ignorance than being engrossed in the, conception, the false conception that I am this body and enjoying this world. That the Mayavad conception that I am that supreme God myself, it's the deepest form of ignorance. And therefore, it's very dangerous. The Mayavadis think we are liberating people, but in reality, they're making people more and more conditioned and bound in darkness. Our Gurudev would say that those who achieve the so-called merging in Mayavad, what happens to them really? Gurudev made this joke. He said that, oh, it's like they go into very hard things like gems that last for many different ages in this world. Even until the end of creation, we're in this kind of complete Jad state. Jad means inert. And it's opposite to the nature of our consciousness. To be Jad means to be inanimate. And to be a Jeev means to be animate, to be alive. And so Mayavad ultimately is leading us to the deepest kind of death. Because what we see, is, what's the difference between someone who's alive and someone who's dead? Someone who's alive, moving around. You're dead, you're a corpse in the ground. Or you're burnt to ash. You're Jad, you become Jad, inert, matter, dead matter. And so Mayavad is leading us to that kind of state of material death and spiritual suicide because then our real potential is lost. So we're going to be covering more arguments in the upcoming videos. Stay tuned. Hare Krishna.